Greetings programmers. Today I want to talk to you about how to put animations in your games. And what I want to do is I want to start with our keyboard program. And so just to go through here, um, we set the height width for the screen. Uh, we're going to set a couple of colors. Uh, I've added blue to this one. I'm using uh, the dinosaur image from the last video. Uh, and it's green. It doesn't work very, against, very well against a black background. So I'm putting a blue background in here setting up the FPS uh, and then in our game loop uh, we're waiting for the player to quit and then we process some keyboard input uh, but I've removed uh, the information about the player on the screen we're going to add that back as we do uh, and then I want to show you the image that I'm going to be using here I have what's called a sprite sheet I created this sprite sheet in a web-based application called Piskel P-I-S-K-E-L and what it is is a tool that allows you to create something like 8-bit graphics and so what I've done here is I've created this image of my dinosaur attacking uh, and you'll see that it has uh, six cells of animation each one of those cells is 32 pixels by 32 pixels um, and that's information that you can uh, reference in the Piskel application itself uh, now, you don't have to use Piscal for your application, uh, but do be aware you're going to need to know the actual size of your images in that sprite sheet in order for this uh, program to work. And again, uh, on my image, I use 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Uh, so each one of these dinosaurs is 32 pixels uh, in width and height. So that's the image I'm going to be using. I'm going to show you how to split apart the sprite sheet and then how to use that sprite sheet to create an animation. Now if you didn't have a sprite sheet or you didn't want to create a sprite sheet, you could load each of these indiv uh, images individually and just use those. Uh, so for example, I could have created six different image files and just loaded those separately. So I want to show you how we're going to use that. Uh, and the first thing I need to do is to uh, load that image. And so uh, to load the image, let's see, let's do it right here. I'm going to load the sheet itself, so I'm going to call it sheet. You can call it whatever you want, uh, but I'm going to call it this to help me remember what it is. And again, I do uh, recommend that you use these as uh, the PNG type file. Okay, and then I'm going to convert that image. Now instead of just blitting this directly to the screen, uh, I want to cut it up and I'm going to put it into a, a list of images. So to create an array in Python, uh, we use the square brackets. So those are the angle brackets right above the inner key. Um, and so this creates a list. And what I, now what I want to do is fill that list. Uh, so I have six images in my thing, so I want to, I'm going to create a loop that goes over that. So I'm going to go over all six images. And uh, just as a helper, I'm going to specify my width and height for these. And I, I do this because uh, if I decide to change the sizes, it's easier to change it in one location where I can reference it very easily. And again, it's 32 by 32. All right, now the next thing I want to do is to create um, a rectangle uh, that we specify where inside the uh, sprite sheet I need to pull the next image. Now remember, I'm uh, iterating over 0 through 5 with my for loop. And so I want to use that uh, as a reference. So uh, for example, the X position, uh, the first one is at 0, the next one will be at 32, then 64. So the, the X position is relative to N is N times the width of the screen, or width of the uh, sprite. So I'm going to say uh, the X is N times the width. Uh, and because this sprite sheet is uh, only one row, my height will uh, always be zero. And remember, that's going to be at the 
top left corner is what we're trying to specify in the X and Y. Uh, and then I'm going to give it the width and the height. Okay. And that's what I'm going to use to pull out that uh, image. All right. So I'm going to get the image. Uh, before I do that, I need to create a surface to store it in. Okay, so if I create a surface and then I'm going to convert it, remember the conversion uh, will help uh, the images split faster. So I'm going to convert that image. And now what I need to do is I need to load the image from my sprite sheet. And here's how I do that. Uh, we're going to blit directly to that image, and what we're going to do, we're going to use that uh, sprite sheet as our original image, okay? And then um, where I want to draw it to on the image itself, draw it at the top left corner, and then give it the rectangle that I want to draw from. And we remember we created the rectangle up there, and so that will reference that location in the sprite sheet and blit it to that image. Now one other thing, um, if you use transparency you'll want to do this next step which is to keep the alpha. So I'm going to set my alpha and then I need to get the pixel um, and so I'm going to get the pixel at the top left corner zero zero and that does need to be a tuple, so I'm going to have to put two parentheses around the zero, zero. Now, if your top left corner is actually part of your image and it's not a transparent color, you will need to modify this to get, uh, and you'll want one pixel somewhere on your image uh, that's uniform across all of the sprites that is your transparent image. Uh, just be aware of that. Okay, and then the function is, it's called color key. And once we've modified the image, uh, we should be good with that image. I want uh, to add it to my list. Uh, so in computer programming, we like to use the word append when we mean to add. And that'll put that image at the end of this list. So the very first one will be put in the first position. The next one will be putting the position after that, so on and so forth. Okay, so that loads up all of our images. Now I want to do is I want to set uh, the... The first image is going to be my default image. So my player image will be the one that's in cell 0. Okay. And then I do need to set the rectangle for the player. Uh, and I'm going to get that directly from the image. So I'm going to pull the rectangle out of there. And then I want to relay cut the player to the center of the screen. And do remember when you want to set your player, you may not want to put it in the middle screen, just put it at the pixels you want to and you can uh, play around with this. Okay, so now that I have that, I would just want to check to make sure that everything is working okay. And so I'm going to come down and uh, between the uh, filling the screen and flipping it, I want to go ahead and blit my player to the screen. So the image that we want to draw and location, we're going to use that player variable to do that. Oops. Cells with an S. All right, so let's try that again. And there we go. Okay, so that's my character. Now I want to add the rest of the animation. Remember the animation is an attack animation. So I'm also going to show you here how uh, you do a cycle. And basically, uh, what I want to do is I want to interrupt the input from the player while the cycle is running. Okay. And to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a uh, Boolean value that asks, is the player attacking? So I'm going to add a variable up at the top. I'm going to say attacking equals false. So basically saying when the game starts uh, the character is not attacking and then what we're going to do is we're going to usurp this keyboard control so I'm going to have two elements here 
and say uh, if the player is attacking, we want to do this one thing. Uh, otherwise, we want to do all this other stuff. And so I'm going to select all this and tab it over. Okay, so if I'm attacking, uh, I want to do one thing. Otherwise, I want to do the other thing. Okay, so when I'm attacking, well, first of all, let's set up uh, what how we attack. So to attack, uh, if my keys, and I'm going to set it to space. It's all capitals. Uh, I want to set my attacking to true. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, tell it that I want to start drawing uh, from the, the first frame, which is an attack frame. Okay? Uh, and then in order to do the attack, I'm going to go to my attacking part of the if statement. I want to set the player image to that frame. Okay. And then I'm going to advance the frame by one. And then I do need to, ch uh, I don't want to uh, get outside that list. Uh, so I need to check to make sure that I still am looking at a frame that's in the list. So if that frame is greater than or equal to the length of that cells, should be an S at the end of that. Uh, if the length is of the cells list, then uh, we're done attacking. I'm going to set it to false. Okay. So now I run it. If I press the space bar, you'll see it does like a, um, a little attack motion. Okay. But it's stopping at my very last frame, so I do want to reset that. So uh, in my else statement for the key processing, I'm going to reset the player image to be equal to that first cell. Okay. Now the other thing, uh, if you're following along with me, you'll notice that the animation is running very quickly. One of the ways that we can uh, fix that is to set... Um, like a speed for how quickly we want to do this. So let's say, um, let's call this uh, animation speed. I'm going to set that to, let's say, 5. Okay. Uh, and the larger the number, the slower the speed, or the slower the animation is going to run. Um, and so what we do is in our attacking, when we do this, uh, we want to divide by the animation speed when we're looking up the cell um, because basically what this will do is it says like uh, if I, I set the animation to speed I want every fifth time it updates to go to a new uh, animation okay? uh, and then that means I also need to uh, increase the size for my check because now we have five times as many uh, things that we're looking up uh, before we end the animation. So now when I try this, you'll see, um, oops, oh, and it is, uh, player image cells zero, okay? So now when I do the animation, you'll see it's a lot slower. And uh, this is something you just want to play around with it and tweak it until you get it just right. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that, uh, it, well, actually I want to show you this too. So when you do attack, it does uh, stop input from the character. So yeah, as I was saying, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful in your games. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, just uh, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, just please leave a like on there. It helps me know what kind of content you're enjoying. So thank you for your time and happy programming.